balance, I think, is what um, needs to be part of the discussion. Um, my understanding is, if done correctly, if done right, the majority of the people here in Guam see this as a great opportunity. Uh, we hope that, again, it's a win-win kind of thing. Uh, but uh, any concerns, and I know there are some, there are community leaders like yourselves who are concerned about the impacts. Well, this is not going to be simply thrust upon you in that way. We have our concept of how this uh, should be done. We are, we are discussing with local leaders, and hopefully in the way we do it, we can do it with the least uh, uh, negative impact to the citizens here as we can. Well, I think if you look at the EIS when it comes out, you'll determine what um, what the implications are in terms of uh, of our of our move and whether they are acceptable. Uh, how to mitigate in, in that regard? Um, you know, there are some things that, if they are viewed as fundamentally unacceptable, uh, that we have to discuss. But I think there are mitigations here that uh, are important, and there are, frankly, um, there are strategic implications to the move. Uh, so it does have to do with, uh, with strategy. It does have to do with America's presence in the region. Uh, so we, wanna, we want that balance. There is a balance between uh, the presence, the strategy, uh, and the local factors that we need to be uh, concerned with. So I think what we'll do, there are 90 days to, to go through the, the EIS, the draft EIS, to go through these things. It's a draft EIS. So what are all your comments and concerns should be taken up, you'll have opportunity to raise them, the technical components that you're raising that I can't, I can't speak to the technical components. I can only speak to you the vision that we have and the plan that we have. Uh, but this uh, hopefully can be worked out over time, uh, again, as part of a, um, a consultative and, and dialogue process. Uh, Secretary Mitchell, the, the, I, I think a lot of people are concerned about uh, how uh, you know, we hear media reports uh, about the actual status of this arrangement with Japan. And since mm -hmm. you certainly are much closer to it than anyone else here in the room, and since you, uh, we just want to know because there's always going to be people around saying, well, the deal's on, the deal's off, uh, so and so, uh, the new uh, elections in Japan uh, have altered the dynamics of the whole process. And so uh, I think one of the things that you could help bring clarity to, at least uh, to the extent you can, is what is the exact state of play vis-a-vis uh, -vis what we hear about the movement of uh, Marines uh, to Guam from Okinawa, uh, and what is your understanding of the current status? The exact state of play, uh, first of all, is we have an agreement uh, between governments that, that has been affirmed, but, but uh, equally important is that there is a new government in Japan like every new government, like our government, as I mentioned, the, the Obama administration came in and they looked at, and they look at not just this agreement, but all agreements and review them and say, does this make sense for our interests, et cetera. Uh, there's a transition period in Japan in particular, there's a, a transition period where the opposition has never been in power, frankly, except for eight, nine months in 94. Uh, it's been 50 years straight where they've been in the opposition. So they need some time to think it through. They have to figure out methods of governance, et cetera. And what we've established with the president in Japan, basically as I speak, arriving in Japan, we, there's an announcement of a process. So we have an agreement, but there's now a process where um, our Department of Defense, Department of State will meet with counterparts uh, in Japan to work this out quietly to figure out how we get to a solution. Uh, I'm confident we'll have uh, a solution that, um, um, that is along the lines of what we have today. Um, but you know, we want to give the government of Japan an opportunity to ask their questions, to, uh, to talk through how they got to this point. Uh, I think it's, it's their right. It's legitimate to ask questions. Uh, we can't go on too long because there are, as we know, we, we're a little bit behind the process. There are sort of milestones here we have to meet. So we're giving them the respect that they deserve as an equal partner in this endeavor. Um, and we, really, we don't think it should delay. We shouldn't get distracted by this. Uh, here in Guam or elsewhere. I think we just proceed as we go. As I say, there are going to be challenges that come up all the time and questions that come up all the time. Um, but we're working that as one level of, our, uh, of the challenges we face in DOD in implementing this. So I'm quite confident we're on the right track um, and we have a very strong alliance with Japan. I think you'll see the visit of the President will be quite successful, um, quite useful in this regard. 
Uh, there's a lot of talk in Washington too, and probably here about crisis in the alliance and problems. And uh, you know, it's just not. I was with Secretary Gates in Japan when he had the meetings uh, about a month ago. Uh, I've I've been to Japan three times in the past uh, two months. Um, you know, there are, uh, it's a transitional period, and uh, we have great confidence in the new government there, and we'll work this out. Okay. Yes, but Uh, I have no, <laughs> I have no answer for that myself. Um, I think it's it's true though that I think um, you know I think that there there will be a, a somewhat of a challenge, a bit of a challenge as I read reports about the impact of the of the um, development here if the plan continues on. There'll be a great impact on the economic development of Guam in terms of construction um, and in the um, in the build up. The question is what it leaves behind, um, and that is a question of what it leaves behind long term uh, as far as jobs and economic development. Uh, again, this is something I think um, uh, needs to be discussed. I think, that, again, inside, outside the fence, we're not going to be here simply as, uh, as occupiers. We're going to be here as, as, as uh, American citizens, next to American citizens. The people that come here are going to be living here. So uh, the hope is that the economic development, the development of Guam will not be simply something we do for Guam, but we do for ourselves. We're going to be encouraging people to, to come here and be deployed here and to look forward to being here with their families. So uh, it's clearly something that we're not, um, you know, in DOD, uh, it's not our job necessary to think about that, the economic development of Guam, but it is something that is on our minds because we can't succeed uh, if uh, Guam doesn't succeed in turn. It's just, it's just a fact. And people are not going to want to come here if they don't feel like, uh, they feel it's um, uh, not a place to be, not a place they want to be deployed. Is there time for another question? Thank you.